Now that the farming season's wrapped up, I'm gonna be able to get back to the camper van project. I couldn't resist working on it though a little bit here and there. I drew some templates for the upper glass windows that were broken and I took it into an automotive glass shop and had some pieces of glass cut. Don't mind the terrible COVID haircut. Got some soapy water. And sold them with some trim lock rubber gaskets. It took some patience to get the glass set in place. I think I'm making progress on one side, but then I look and the back side fell out. I think it's going. And this is the locking rubber key. And you have a little tool to feed it into the slot, in theory. It honestly wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. I installed some sound deadening mats around the front of the cab. It's only the metal floor there and I thought it would help a lot with road noise. And then I installed the new carpet. I think I need to trim the laminate flooring back a little bit. And I'm also going to cut out the plywood that I installed on the front floor up here. I don't think it's doing much and it just gets in the way of the carpet so it doesn't sit down, sit down flat like I'd like it to. Hopefully it cuts down on some of the road noise. Let's bring in the carpet. Uh. The new carpet for the front of the van just arrived and I'm really excited to get it installed. It comes pre-molded specifically for each model of car and I think it's gonna look really nice. I'm gonna trim all the holes for the seat bolts. After installing the wood flooring in the back, the heater is raised up just a little bit and it doesn't match up with the holes that were previously cut in the side of the van anymore. So I had to widen the holes and fabricated a new, slightly longer vent cover out of some stainless steel. Now I'm working on the toilet tank. I love all the Sprinter camper van builds, but I think the biggest downside to all those is that you're typically crapping in a bucket that you keep under the kitchen sink. I've got no interest in that. So it's a very high priority for me on this camper van build to have a full-fledged toilet with a closing door. 
Actually, I already made a stainless steel tank for the toilet. But it warped quite a bit when I was welding it. And I'm just not confident that it's not going to rust. My stainless steel welding skills are not up to par. Some of my welds already have a little bit of rust on it. It's also quite a bit heavier than I was anticipating it to be. So I decided to rebuild it using aluminum. I think there's going to be a couple of advantages to using aluminum. Uh, one is that it's going to be quite a bit lighter. Two, I'm a little bit better at welding aluminum. Not a lot better, but a little bit better. And three, I have a sheet metal brake now. So I'll use that to do as many of the bends as I can and minimize the amount of welding. I've actually never cut aluminum on the CNC plasma before. So I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Before I do that though, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Ariat. It's funny, when I was a young kid working on the farm, I would just wear tennis shoes and old basketball shorts to work because I figured it was all going to get dirty and oil stained anyways, so I wore my least nice stuff. But now that I'm older, I've realized how important it is to wear good quality clothing that protects you as you work and holds up throughout the day. Good work boots, protecting your feet, are important as anything, and a pair of nice jeans that are comfortable and fit right just make you feel good. Ariad is my favorite clothing brand for all my workwear because they have such a strong reputation for high quality construction, using materials that help keep you cool on a hot day by being breathable and utilize greater mobility seam construction, which keeps your movement uninhibited. Click the links in the description to see my favorite Ariat products and save 10% off your first order. I really want to thank Ariat for sponsoring this video and for being my favorite workwear clothing that I wear here on the farm every day. Thanks, Ariat. The aluminum cut great. Man, the plasma cutter zipped through it and left a pretty nice edge. It created quite a bit more smoke than there would be with steel though. I slid the cut pieces into the brake and made some bends. I really wanted to use all the space I could for the tank, which meant it came out looking fairly intricate. In a van this small, you don't want to waste any space. I don't have a ton of experience welding aluminum, so I'm still figuring out the best settings to use. For aluminum, you use alternating current power, which is why it makes the buzzing noise versus when it's quiet when I was welding the stainless. When it's working well, it's really enjoyable welding aluminum. You can't see it without the welding helmet, but the aluminum gets glossy and almost mirror-like when it's molten. And you just dab, dab, dab with the filler rod as you travel across the weld. I got a one and a half inch threaded aluminum fitting that I welded on for a vent. So I'll connect to a roof vent with PVC. Originally I was trying to find a toilet flange that would work for this specific situation. And I didn't really have any luck. So I'm just gonna try to build the toilet flange into the tank itself. And the first thing I gotta do is roll this piece to match that shape there. Thank you. 
Once I had the flange welded solid, I used a flap disc to clamp the weld and make a flat surface that the toilet gasket will seal against. The last thing to weld was a 3 inch threaded fitting on the underside of the tank, which will go out the bottom of the van. I really didn't trust my aluminum welding and wanted to pressure test the tank before installing it. I mean, if this thing leaks anywhere, it's going to be a really crappy situation. I temporarily capped the openings and used the air wand to add a couple PSI of pressure to the tank. Then I could spray soapy water around all the welds to check for any leaks. I could see how well the soapy water worked around my temporary 3 inch cap, which was leaking quite a bit. And I did actually find a small crack in one of the welds, so the pressure test ended up being well worth the time. Once I had the crack welded up, I could set the tank in place. It's a really satisfying fit. I had a couple small tabs I could screw through to hold the tank in place. I figured it wouldn't need much. I put some thread dope on the inside of a 3 inch ABS threaded adapter and tighten it onto the aluminum fitting. Then I could glue on an elbow and the outside valve. I don't have the cabinet designs completely finished up yet for the inside of the van, so I can't fully enclose the aluminum box until I know exactly where they're going to go, but I got the upper and side pieces in place. When I finished my dumbbell set a while ago, I was really excited to use it for the first time. When I finished welding on the sprayer booms in a previous video, I headed out to the field to test them out. This project was no different. Now that it's done, there's only one thing left to do.